All right, guys, so how could I not show you my Espaillade peaches here? If we're gonna do a tour, I mean, this is really the focal point of my backyard, of my backyard orchard. And I would argue the Espaillade form of growing a, a fruit tree or something along a fence, maybe a wall, maybe a structure, is really the best, in my opinion, the best form that you can have in a backyard fruit tree. Um, they really have such a great function to them, which we'll talk about in a minute, but they're also just beautiful. I mean, I really had a, someone who has never been here before, uh, a woman came by to actually get a, a fruit tree from me, and she, uh, I was showing her different things around the yard, and she actually kept saying uh, that she's really um, into Espaillade trees, and I said, oh, I have, as soon as we turned the corner of the house, I said, look, there's actually some Espaillade peaches I have. And her eyes just lit up. She actually has a uh, interior design business. So she really has an artistic eye. And you could certainly make an argument that these trees, I mean, how can you not agree that they are beautiful? They're just striking. And I know that uh, fruit trees, really are not meant to be beautiful. I mean, um, oddly enough, the, the blooms this year on these peaches are not that vibrant. It's kind of strange, uh, maybe because there's so many flowers this year, but I have some peaches actually and nectarines in the front of the house, and they are beautiful, those flowers. I mean, they're not going to last very long like an ornamental tree would, but the, uh, the blooms on those trees in the front are extremely vibrant pink and different shades of pink, and even just a strikingly beautiful flower. Uh, so I think it does depend on the variety and maybe even the year, but historically, I would argue that these two varieties, the Alberta here and the Red Haven, have really not had the, the most beautiful blooms or the most vibrant uh, blooms that I've ever seen on a peach tree. However, they are beautiful uh, because just look at the form. You know, they really do have a, that great structure that you're looking for that really catches your eye. Now, the function is obviously fantastic as well because if you were to measure from the fence to as far out as these trees go, it's only about four feet. It's not even five feet yet. I mean, I could lie down and I would have plenty of room here um, along my body that... Uh, we still have to go. So I, I think the, the function, it not only just it doesn't take up a ton of space, I could even keep them a lot smaller. You know, um, I could very easily make cuts all the way across the top, this top tier, uh, this top cordon that I have, and then just keep everything summer pruned. And these trees would be even size controlled. But the beautiful thing about them is that even if you just ignore the entire top tier, just totally ignore it. Let's just pretend it doesn't even exist. There is so much fruit in this lower section here. It's insane, actually. Uh, it's crazy. I've really focused on over the years now, because these trees are about six or seven years old, of really just getting a lot of the branching to come either outwards horizontally or even downwards. And I've kept that wood. That wood historically, just based off of really how fruit trees work and, and plants work, the hormones are different in the branches that are growing horizontally or even downwards. There's a lot less fruit in this stuff up at the top, even though actually they're filled with flowers up there too. But if you just kept the wood that's even horizontal or, or facing downwards, you'd have plenty of fruits. I'm gonna have so many fruits from these trees then I'm not really gonna know what to do with them. It's gonna be insane. Um, it's, you know, I'm gonna have to actually get a ladder and thin out a lot of the fruits up here at the top and even uh, come in here and pick all those fruits later in the season. Uh, it's a good problem to have, but I'm telling you that for a backyard orchard, there is no better form. Um, they're beautiful and they also serve a ridiculously efficient function. And I would really like in the future when I move away from this property is actually to plant myself maybe in a terraced section that's on a slope and really have, 
you know, a number of Aspiate fruit trees. Maybe even on this property, if I had the room, I could plant another fr uh, Aspiate fruit trees right here in this row and have them spaced really only about six or seven, maybe eight feet apart from the prior Aspie. Um, depending on the angle of the sun, all I'd have to do is make sure that they're getting this sun right here and also still getting enough sunlight to the trees behind it and I'd be in business. And you could do that all the way around, all the way down this slope here that there is in my yard. However, if it was a bit more extreme, it probably would make a bit more sense. But this is our walkway here. So uh, I do think that they're such an easy thing even to create as well. You don't have to be some special tree guy to do this. And we've sort of been showing you guys that with the Espaillade plums that we just planted. I mean, we literally just planted them last spring. I put these guys in the ground. These are also standard sized trees. They're in a much shadier environment, by the way. This area back here maybe only gets about five hours of light. Plums can certainly handle that. And this guy here, well, both of them reach the top wire. Once they reach the top wire, because I got them as a whip and they already almost were at this top wire, they already had some lower branching down here. All I had to do when they got to the top was clip them off. And last summer, they grew these arms. And then at the end of the year, I tied the arms down to the wire. I think this may have taken two years, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, you can't really rush this process because you want to get it right. You want to get the form right from the beginning. But this is only a two-tiered section here. But it doesn't matter. You know, they're still equally as beautiful. They're still equally as functional. They're not going to take up a ton of space over here. I mean, I have, look, apple trees right here in high density. We have the, uh, the grapes over here that are right next to them. So this is the most ideal area uh, that you could plant them right here is really just squeeze them right in and they're really not going to take up all that much space. From this point, once we've got the arms established, we got them to the, the height that we wanted and cut that off, they form those arms, you tie them down to the branches. It really then is just kind of like maintaining a grapevine with multiple arms, multiple sets of arms. You know, my grapes have one trunk that comes up and has an arm that comes out in either direction and we just prune them back to spurs every year. It's really that simple. Um, this branch down here is already forming something beautiful, although it's from uh, it's attached to the main trunk here. It is already gotten this horizontal or downward form that I'm looking for to keep this tree a bit small and use, make use, better use of space. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're flower, they're in full bloom, just like the peaches over there that we looked at. And uh, I would say if I left them here next year, they would put out a ton of fruit. Um, and really it was only a very short amount of time. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. This was a little bit of a look on backyard, backyard, orchard, espaliers. We'll see you guys soon.